people see the way I talk and shit, I think that's better. I think it's better to be direct and to tell people the truth because everyone else is lying to you. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Power. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pinzon. Today we find ourselves in beautiful Miami. And I have the great pleasure of having right next to me a man that has been killing it. He's an ex-convict, being incarcerated for over 10 plus years. And in less than five years, he has grown a business over $100 million. Someone that you got to listen to. So tune in because we're going to have a great conversation with this gentleman. And pick his brain and see what, how he's been able to scale his business in such a short period of time. So Wes, my man, thank you for being here, brother. Thank yeah, love it, love it. Unleash your power. I love that name. Yeah. I mean, I've tell I've told people from the beginning, my success, it stemmed from the fact that I put so much power and so much emphasis in our small daily habits. When everybody would overlook things like their wake up time, their workout, the way they eat, their thought process, I was incarcerated. Yeah. So all I had was this way of living. So I place so much emphasis on my thoughts, my actions, my energy, and aligning them with a man that I respected, that I was proud of, that I came out and it was very fucking easy to crush it out here because so many people were underdeveloped. Mm. And what I tell people all the time is your success will never exceed your level of personal development. Per success is something you attract by the person you've become. Correct. So pick a field, pick a blueprint, pick anything. If I make the best Jeffrey Pinzone, there's no way anyone could compete with him. If he's at the highest level he could be at, by default alone, everybody is going to perform less at a less standard than Jeffrey is. So, I mean, I came out and by just never missing. I never missed a YouTube post, never missed an Instagram post. I posted on Instagram in prison in black and white. The day I got out, I put up a color pic. I said, I've emerged, watch what I can do. And now we're coming up on my sixth year of being free. And this year alone, I clocked over $24 million. Wow. And fuck the $24 million, because I didn't even really try. I didn't even try that hard. I really just never missed. So people always ask what the secret is, and they say, what do you do? What do you do? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? I said, who? And they say, well, what? And I said, how? You know, like, how did I do it? Or who am I, who am I to be able to do it? And this was the difference, because everybody will ask you what you do. And I say, it's what I don't do that made mm. me successful. And then everyone will ask how you did it. And I said, it's who I am. So a lot of people will see what I do, and they see that I make it attractive, and they believe they can do it, and they try to go do it, and they don't get the same result because they go about the online space as a businessman. Mm. You need to go about the online space and build your brand as an influence. You need to focus on giving maximum value and impact to your followers, changing lives, working on people. That's how we do it online. A lot of the business guys come on and they just want to make people money because they're a business guy and that's their agenda. And people do want to make money. But the fact is, is if you don't work on people first, then you'll be, sh you'll, be, you'll be trying to snag one person at a time that fits your model instead of cultivating, creating tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of people that are ready to apply your system. Mm. And I create a system. Mm. My system is the fact that I get people right mentally, physically, spiritually, I get them right, the best version of them on my mid-level program that's $299 to $2,000 a year. I get you right. And you love that way of life so much, I teach you to teach it to other people. Mm. So the ascension is there. It's almost like its own fucking university. So how, did, how did you get yourself right first, right? Because exactly. you were locked up and I, how, I, how, did that, how did that play a game? I got myself head? right through um, honesty. Honesty. So okay. I, I, was, I was fucking up. Okay. And I always thought I was pretty fucking tough because sitting here right now, I'm 245 pounds. I stay single digit body fat and I'm covered in prison ink. I mean, I'm pretty fucking tough. I did 10 years in California prison system. So I'm a tough fucking guy, right? Right. Nah, every time I kept getting myself in trouble, um, catching a shoe term in prison where I almost lost my fucking right to freedom for life. Uh, I kept just fucking up and it, it would break me. I mean, when I caught an in-house A1-115, which is the worst type of write-up you can get in prison for an in-house um, in fucking uh, assault with a manufactured weapon, 
I cried like a bitch. And I sat there in my cell and I caught a 14 month shoe term from this. Mm. So I sat there in my cell and I just looked at myself in the mirror. I said, you think you're fucking tough, but is this how someone who's hard acts? No, this is someone who's hurt. This is someone who's hurt and lashing out. And I looked at myself and I'm like, you're a fucking pussy. You're a pussy ass bitch. And so when I came out to the real world, nobody really understood my content at first, but it was me yelling at me. Mm. They think I'm yelling at them on the phone. Mm. This is me yelling at me. This is how I talk to me. Where you're sharing to others is something that you got to listen to. For I, I, everyone, I fucking love that. everyone talks to themselves very real inside. Yeah. But when the camera comes out, what do they do? They censor. They don't talk the way they really talk. But I knew I had to speak to everybody the way I spoke to myself. I had to use the same fucking energy, the same directness, the same tactics that I used on myself. I had to give that to other people or I'm giving them a lesser form of motivation, a lesser form of truth. Mm -hmm. So I came out and I made content that was the direct truth that worked on myself. Wow. So how, when you came out, like how did, how did you adjust, right? From being incarcerated 10 years to now coming to the real world where now there's different stuff. Social media had changed. Everything had changed in 10 years. How did you apply? I'm, I'm fucking on did point. Did you get hungry? Nah, You're like, man, yeah. I'm going to take everybody out. Cause. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on point. Like, when I was in prison, I had cell phones. Okay. So I had, I had smartphones in prison. Yeah. Like, when I was on level four yards and shit, at the start, we only had flip phones, like Samsungs and shit. <laughs> and, like, the little Nokia brick yeah. phones and shit to where you, you could go on Facebook, but it was janky as shit. And then once I got to, like, level twos, you know, around 2014 and 15, I got to these lower level facilities and these would have smartphones. Now they started to have smartphones in the higher up facilities later, but they didn't have them in the, in the early teens and shit. They started getting them around 14, 15 is when they started hitting the yard. And um, I was just, I just stayed in, in fucking in the loop. You know, I was on Instagram oh, and I was okay. doing all my shit. And since I was operating at a high level of personal development in prison, uh, I was just, I was still, I was progressing past what people knew on the street. In all reality, like, the technology and everything out here was probably slower than the way I could adjust if I really just tapped into what a human is supposed to be at the essence, which I did, and just solved the problems of the man. Mm -hmm. So then just by listening to my conscience, by reading quote books, and by really resonating on the truth of what I had to be as a man, I think I surpassed a lot of the problems that were happening on the street so I came out and gave solutions from a place that didn't have the same problem as the place I was entering, which was being free again. Mm. So in prison, we don't have the same problems as you do on the street. A lot of people out here manufacture um, difficulties mm. and they're their own cause of their problems. It's self-sabotage. It's a flawed, a flawed perspective. There's a lot of mindset issues out here. In prison, you can't really have that. Like you have to look at everything positive in prison because mm. everything fucking sucks mm. in prison. Everything is fucking negative. So you have to look at it positive. Most people on the street, everything's so fucking easy that they look at life very negative. They don't know how to fucking use their perception of reality correctly. Mm. And so I like to say, tell people your frequency is what you frequently see. Mm. Now I stumbled across a quote from Einstein or it was Tesla or Einstein. There was a quote that said, um, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So then I started like understanding simple stuff like the vibrational chart and being in a, a state of um, actualization. And I started understanding what I felt like when I was fully aligned with um, that call from within. Mm -hmm. So everybody has a conscience and that conscience calls us. And the call from within was telling me to stop doing drugs. It was telling me to work out more. It was telling me to like monitor my diet. And it was telling me all the most simple things to be like the man that I wanted to be. So as I followed- When did you start getting that? It just as, as I dropped the drugs. Okay. So when you drop all the vices, you drop the drugs, you drop the alcohol, you start hearing that voice from within. Mm. A lot of people can't hear that voice out here because they take pills, they overeat, they drink, they smoke. So all these drugs clog that, that connection, that intuition, that what people call God's actual voice. I mean, a lot of cultures refer to your conscience as the authentic voice of God. So the second you start hearing that voice clearly, it's the path you're supposed to walk. I had no other path left to walk. I had tried everything. 
I had done every drug. I had been the most violent motherfucker. I had made millions of dollars before prison. I had been a womanizer. I had, I've done everything. So there was no other path to walk than just say, hey, maybe if I'm just the exact opposite of who I used to be, yeah. a violent drug, drug addict, drinking piece of shit man, maybe if I was just the exact opposite, let's see how my life would be. That's how I made the change. It was very easy. Okay. I just had to be the opposite of the old Wes Watson. And to be the opposite, I just listened to my conscience and I followed that path. And that path made me feel so good that that's what started to change everything. Because in all reality, like your view of the world has to do with your internal state. Correct. The world is not as it is, the world is as we are. Yeah. So when I started to make a better me, I saw a better world. When I saw a better world, I was more positive and more optimistic. When I was more positive and optimistic, I did more work daily with more energy. And I did it with more clarity mm -hmm. and at a higher level. Well, love that. So you mentioned, you mentioned quotes, right? Uh, I, one of my favorite quotes is by Miles Monroe. And he's, he, he says, an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. And the answer to that dilemma is attitude, right? How has your attitude propelled you to the next level and also in leadership, right? Because you were with Alpha, a lot of people that... that always had their guard up, right? How did you get that when you were in prison and, and took that leadership role into the real world? Well, my biggest thing is um, when you're a leader, your weakness is their way out. Mm. So Can you those, on that? When, when, you're, when you're leading people, your weakness will be their way out. They will listen to you if you don't have a, perce a, a visible weakness that they will opt out from listening to you from that weakness. So I was jacked as fucking prison. I like... 230, 240, covered in fucking gang ink that I got in prison. I proved myself on the yard every day with two to five workouts a day. I, I woke up earlier than everyone. My bed was fucking, my bedroll was cleaner. My area was cleaner. I never missed a program movement. I was on point and what makes us on point in prison as a man to the other inmates and the other men, which is our program. So my program was so on point, that's all you validate from in prison, how you conduct yourself daily. Now, when you come out to the real world, everybody here can hide. They can sleep in, they can eat how they want, they can do all this shit, and then they can act like they're all into yoga, but they're doing cocaine, you know? <laughs> it's like they're a bunch of fucking idiots. Mm. And in prison, you can't because everybody can see what you're doing. You're on blast. You're on front street all day in prison. We all know what the fuck you do. If you got dirty underwear, we can fucking see it. It's hung on your rack, and you better fucking go get some new ones, you sick fuck. Get those the fuck out of here. You're showing up bad for your people. So the whole thing is, is like, knowing that my weakness was people's way out, I sought to make myself void of all weakness. Mm. I mean, even as close as to where like other dudes that like say I had the keys for the whites, which are the woods, I have the keys. And then next to me, homie Flip had the keys for the Damus, which was a group of the blacks, like the bloods. And uh, he was from Crenshaw Mafia and Flip was, he was a little, he was like a smaller dude, but he was just jacked. Like one of them crazy chest, chiseled rip, doing sets of like 40 pull-ups, 50 pull-ups. He was doing 19 years for attempted murder. And um, Flip, every time on Sunday, he would take the day off. Because he believed like most people, you got to take one day off and rest and uh, to build the muscle. And I'm like, and every Sunday he would walk by my rack and he would be like a little bit off, you know. Like not, not his up, his high frequency energy that was just infectious. I'm like, how's that day off treating you, dog? And, and he'd be like, fuck you, fool. Like <laughs> he wouldn't bend from it because Sunday was his day off. And uh, I saw that and I'm like, no, no days off. I don't feel good when I take a day off. And people would be like, well, you'll build more muscle if you don't. I'm like, but you're not bigger than me. <laughs> so, so you're not bigger than me. You're not more jacked than me. And you're telling me to take days off. That's one of the biggest things. If you, do, if you are not beating me in any area, I cannot listen to you. Okay. You would have to make a lot of sense. And maybe you could get me to buy your point. But I cannot follow you or listen to you unless you're besting me in that area. So I came out and I just said, I'm going to beat everybody in all these areas so they have to listen. And I wasn't naturally saying I'm going to bench press more or this or that. It was just all about the showing up. Yeah. So I'm going to beat you by showing up more consistently. I'm gonna beat you over time. I'm gonna have more long view and I'm gonna wear you out. I'm gonna wear you down. You're gonna look like a fool trying to compete with me because mm. I'm gonna show up every day I'm never gonna miss. And I already know you'll miss. You ain't as strong as me. I was in prison for 10 years. I don't miss. And they're just like, 
Fuck you, watch, I'm not gonna miss. They'll all miss. And so that's the thing. If I single-handedly showed that I don't suffer from the problem that everybody suffers from, that keeps them from success, the one problem that keeps them from success, if I can single-handedly show that I do not possess that problem, then they'll wanna work with me. And the thing is, is I don't even care if they'll work with me. I just know that I would work with someone who does that and I need to be that man. So being the man I always needed was a big thing for me. So everybody's problem in whatever they're pursuing mm -hmm. is that at some point or another, they lose momentum, they lose motivation, and they start to miss. They start to falter on what they have to do daily to be where they want to be. If anyone's got job was to be ripped and they never missed on their diet, they would hit it. If someone's job was to be a fucking astrophysicist and it was all these steps and they never miss one step, they would do it. But people don't. They don't follow through. Why do you think they don't? They don't follow through because they don't see the, the result quick enough. Okay. So my whole thing was, what if the result was that I showed up every day? Mm. So I shaped my mindset around the man who shows up. Your perspective changed. The, the man who takes more pride in the steps he takes to get the result, than the result itself, he cannot be stopped. Mm. So this is the thing. I will only take... I will only find my validation and get pride from the fact that I'll never miss. And if I never miss, I'll beat everybody. So you, you're not even worried about the results. You're just I was worried never about worried showing about showing up. I just got to show up daily. And I, I, I saw a, an interview that you did with uh, Brad Lee and you talked about his, you're like, man, 2.45 a.m., you're going to see a fucking post from me, no matter what. And you've seen it and, and you talk about that compounding, right? You're like, I got clients today that they've been following me for seven, eight years, right? That they just became a client. Why? Because they've seen me post consistently. Because I won. never miss. Man, I, I, won, my, I won their trust. Yeah. I was telling my guy, man, I'm like, this guy never misses. I'll never miss. Yeah. I'd rather <laughs> die. Yeah. What if you'd rather, people say, when, when you want success more, as much as you need air, you'll win. I won't miss. I've never missed a YouTube upload. That's why my YouTube channel's bigger than most people. I've never missed a 2.45 a.m. post, a workout post, a wall post on Instagram. I've never missed the daily posts that I teach. Because now I teach, once I got my clients right and taught them how to build the best version of them, then I taught them my system to then help others get right. And it, a lot of it is me going through the social media blueprint that made me successful. And if you see a lot of my guys, you'll see that they post the same way as mm -hmm. me. Some of the top business people online, if you go to their page and you see that they're posting like me, they're my clients. A lot, some of them won't give me testimonials because they're kind of, uh, there's kind of an ego there saying, hey, Wes Watson taught me this because it was so fucking easy. Mm. I have clients, some of the top, one of my clients, one of the top people in the space, we were on an 18 minute phone call. He said, I got 18 minutes. I love successful people. They never have time <laughs> and they'll optimize every moment. This guy's very successful. Everybody knows who he is. Well, at the last speaking engagement, um, I coached, Five out of the seven speakers in Dallas at Carlos Reyes' event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five out of the seven speakers were clients of mine. Wow. So that's, that shows something. But one of the speakers there is this guy. And um, we get on an 18-minute phone call. I, sh I show him how to post. I show him the apps to download. And I show him how we're going to structure the sales process. At the end of day one, he had 10 x his investment. His investment was 12,500. He made 120 grand at the end of day one, and he has since turned it into an eight-figure business. So like off just eight, one thing an 18-minute phone call, he made an eight-figure business out of this. But I would expect that guy to do it nothing less. Right. It was already there. He was already doing it, and all I had to be like, bro, 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 bro. Do this, do this, do this, say this, say this, say this, charge this, charge this, download this, download this, boom, ready to go. <laughs> and he was like, oh my God, that was the easiest thing I've ever fucking done. A lot of you guys don't realize it's all there. It's sitting there and you, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah, yeah. You don't know how to tap into it. Do you know how many influencers, if I went in their DM box and I correctly cultivated their program that they're gonna help people with, that they're gonna change lives with. If I correctly cultivated their program with structured posting and everyone got to see how, they're po how they post and what they're doing, and then, I didn't, and then people would engage on those posts and then we would make an offer to those. Do you know how easy it would be for me to make most people 10 million plus a year that have a, 
even not even a substantial following, a normal following. One of my guys right now, Adam Hudson, he's a big uh, Australian client, worked with Tony Robbins, sold a million dollars from stage in one hour with Tony Robbins years ago. This guy just launched his personal brand with me. The first day he did 140K. The first 10 days he did 540. He will have a seven figure first month with 40,000 followers online. Wow. That's crazy, man. So how, how, how did you get to that step, to that, to that process, right? What were some failures that you, that, that, that were, that you encountered in the process to learn how to, how to build that brand, how to build the system? Like what were some of your favorite failures? Well, the, the biggest thing was my pricing was off. My okay. biggest failure was when I started and my pricing was off. I used to say 250 for one month to work with me. And I would still make like four to seven grand a day off $250 signups. And then later I was like, oh shit. Now I have an elite program that's 6,000 a month to 40,000 a year. Then I have a branding program that's 3,000 a month, 20,000 a year. Then I have a, a, my normal program with the 250 one is now 300 a month, 2,000 a year. Just by having different months that they can buy, different tiers and everything, I, that's how my business changed from making about 400,000 a month back then to, you know, I was making like, you know, 200,000 a month to like 350 on my biggest month way back then, right when I started. Because wow. I had such an influx of leads from the content I would put out. So I would always, I went really viral at the start and I've stayed really viral on everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So and it's because of the message. It's not the fucking money. It's the man and the message. You could have all the Lambos in the world and the craziest life in the world. But if you don't have a solid message, you will not be good online. Okay, so I just had to tell them that because they get all fucked up. <laughs> they, they see all the cars and all the shit and they're like, well, maybe if I buy a Lambo, I'll, I'll make as much as Wes. No, you won't be like Wes until you build your, your brand like Wes and make it message based oh. and you show a lot about your life. So, but anyways, once I changed my pricing structure and had multiple tiers and multiple offers, but very simple offers that never changed, that's how I changed drastically how much I made. So the, the, the tiers helped you tap into every market, right? Every market. People so the affluent, the people that are just getting started, that don't, they're lost, they don't have the money, the resources, you're getting them in there, you're working on their mind, then you have the elite, that's, that's phenomenal, you're not missing. Yeah, so one, one of the biggest things was is that so I started with that, just get them right program. And then I didn't, I wasn't the guy who's like, I have to teach people how to make money online. That's how you make money. I was never that fucking idiot. And those people piss me off. The people who just go online, like I need to teach people how to make money online and they haven't. Mm. They're the biggest lames on the internet. So I made eight figures plus, like literally coaching people how to just be better with their training, their nutrition and their mindset. So I made multi eight figures that way first. I didn't even think about teaching someone how to build a brand. Then my guys that loved my program came to me and said, can you teach me how to do what you do? So I, I did not whiteboard this out. I'm not some guy who has, who plans it ahead and is like, how am I gonna make a million dollars a month? My people came to me and told me what they wanted from me. Mm. That's a real business and a real brand where your customers or your clients are the ones telling you what to offer next because they're loyal to you. Now, a lot of people online don't really have a brand. They, they have a fake following. They're business guys who've made some money. They, they think this is a way to build a brand online. They're not really involved with their followers. They don't really know their clients and they, they really fuck up the internet mm. because their goal is to make money and that's not wrong. Like that's, they're fine. But if you're a coach and you have a personal brand, you have to be personally a large part of this. Mm. And I've made every sale my company's ever made me personally. Every time you come to my website or my DM or anything, you're talking to me and you're buying from me. So everybody, every hey, single sale that was ever made by my company was from me. That's crazy. So how do you, how do you manage so many clients with that? How do you, how do you deal with that? I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very simple. I know, okay. how, I know how to structure shit very simple. Okay. I know exactly what you need. We only do exactly what you need. There's no frills. There's no bells and whistles. We don't want to make it look so professional. We want your results. A lot of people go over making their business look professional, seem professional. You have to talk to Tina and Tommy and Johnny before we get on a call. Like I'm just, telling you what I'm gonna do for you. We're talking, 
I sell you the product or service and I get you a result that blows your fucking mind. I just took out all the bullshit. In all reality, the reason most people don't have time is because they have this fucking system that's this go around shit show, you know? Mm. I just cut out all the bullshit and we go straight to it. And it's very fucking simple. I've simplified the fuck out of the coaching process, the branding process online. And I still work with people on their diets. I still close people on $299 and $750 programs that just want to get better. Because guess what? Some of my best clients were those people. And then I made them better. And now they're fucking shining stars that are like, bro, he talked to me when I was just a $300 motherfucker. And that shit must give you so much fulfillment too. It's right? the, fire you up. Like, dude, the client in the gym today, talked to Thomas, the girl yeah. who was all ripped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she literally like came so out of shape and she was like a $299 client. And then her name is spelled so crazy. I thought it was like a fake name. <laughs> I'm like, who the, f what? I've never heard that name. Uh, so I'm like, there's no way there's even a real person. And then she comes in and she just kills it in the first three months. Like, you know, recurring 299 for like three months, it gets ripped. And then she's going through like a divorce mm. and she stays strong and her content's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And then she signs up for my coaching program for a year for 20K. So the 299 person ended up being one of the strongest female clients ever and then buying a 20K a year. Now she's coaching other people, other women, and just crushing it. Like literally she's been at two of my masterminds. If you watch her, she's one of the most dialed in people I've ever seen. If she keeps going on this path, there's no way that she won't be one of the top women in this field. It's just not even possible. She's outdoing them all. Mm. And that's the whole thing. That's what I teach people first and foremost, is to become, not acquire. A lot of people think life is about appearing and acquiring, but it's about being and becoming. If you become something, Be nobody can take it from you. Oh. Like lots do, few are. Mm. So that's why the who, who are you? That's being? who. Who the fuck are you? Who being? the fuck are you? Like, yeah. I'm gonna make the who that is undeniable. Yeah. Like I'm the who that's undeniable. If I saw me walk up, like I drive a Rolls Royce Phantom as a normal driver. Oh, yeah. Like I drive a wide body Urus here because it was a car I was driving in the rain when there's shit everywhere. <laughs> and it's like 600 grand. But I have five Rolls Royces. I don't even drive them. I have three fucking Lambos, five Rolls Royces, Ferraris. You're talking about, man, I need to turn them on. <laughs> I gotta go, I gotta go start the motherfuckers up because they're probably gonna have problems. I haven't been, a, I haven't been in my warehouse in a month. Wow. I have a warehouse that's 25,000 a month just to store my cars. And, it, and literally, I don't even, I haven't even been over there because I've just been chilling with the family, loving it. Yeah. But um, the whole thing is, is like, when you, if I saw me pull up, I would want to know what the fuck I do. And a lot of people don't operate from yeah. that. They really think that the world is going to accommodate them. Yeah. The world's not. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to take the spot. And that's what I did differently, and that's what I teach my people differently. I take shit. Yeah. I don't come ask. Come on. Like, motherfuckers think that they're going to talk a certain way when I'm in the room. A lot of people get real silent. And it's not because they think I'm fucking going to come fucking threaten them and I'm a physical presence who's going to be violent. It's because they know around certain people they can't say certain things. Yeah. I can say anything I want because everything that I fucking talk about, I did at the highest level. That's what I want to get my clients to. Yeah. I want to get them at such a level of self-actualization that when they decide to transcend self and become the teacher, they can say anything the fuck they want because they're it through and through. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Let, let, let's touch on branding, right? Because that's one of the most challenging things that a lot of people talk about, build, building a brand. But at the same time, you talked about building the business, right? When it comes to building a brand, everybody's worried about the logo. How is it going to look? What type of, where am I going to market it? What are some steps that you help a person get that clarity, like from the business perspective and from building the brand perspective? Well, online personal brands are kind of different nowadays. And your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So that's what your brand is, how they talk about you. Okay. And most people who've ever come across my content, which is online, your content is your brand. Mm -hmm. What you give everybody outwardly online, that's your brand. How people feel about what you put out and who you are. So your personal brand is completely different than running like a type of business. Okay. But the personal brand has to be truly authentic. Like you have to just really be you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to do that because they're nine to five motherfuckers. They've checked in everywhere they went. 
They had to be different at their job. They had to be different in everything they were doing. They've just learned how to follow, right? They've, they've learned how to follow what they're supposed to be told. Yeah. And that's not authentic. Like, you have to really be able to be the authentic you. And um, my whole thing is, is just really stepping people into becoming their highest version of them. So, and I just teach a lot of belief systems. I get people to tap into themselves deeper. And when people start living a life of purpose. So give me some samples where it's like, let's say somebody's listening right now and they want to tap into that, reinvent themselves. They want to tap into that higher self. What are some, sh some stuff that you will be like, then you need to implement this today, starting now. Well, I mean, everything that we're being called step in the mirror. What's it going to tell you? Drop 10 pounds, quit drinking, be a more positive person and be better to the people around you. Nobody's not going to hear that voice. We all hear that voice. A lot of people think they'll just, they'll feel better once they make money because they're stressed out about money. So once they have the money, then they'll go to the gym. Once they have the money, they'll be nicer to their spouse and the people around them. But in all reality, like those that don't reflect, they project. Mm. So people who don't take care of themselves, they're not good to other people. The second you fail on your daily, what you had set for yourself today, if you have a certain diet set for yourself, a wake up time, a workout, you have certain things that you have set that you have to do today for you to feel your best. The second you start missing on these things, well then you're failing. Yeah. When you're failing, everything's failing around you. Right. Everyone looks like a failure. Yeah. Right now I'm winning so hard I haven't missed shit today. I'm murdering it today. So I only see how we're gonna fucking build Jeffrey's business. We're gonna fucking, when next person we come across, we're gonna tell them they better eat better, they better work out, they better drop all the bullshit. They're gonna elevate to this person. And once they're this person, everything's gonna be easier. So like, I only see people in my current state. Mm -hmm. So psychologists say we don't see other people per se. We see our current state projected onto others. Mm. That's why your family who hasn't done shit, when you tell them your massive goals, they'll be like, Jeffrey, like, shouldn't you just get a normal job? Yeah. Because that's them saying for you to be them. Do not be around these types of people if you have massive goals. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to fuck up your massive goals is to tell it to fucking losers yeah. who settle for less. People who don't follow their vision. But how could they have a vision? That's their reality. Yeah. Like you have to go get around people whose reality is like mine. If you want a reality like mine, yeah. you'll come around me and say, I want to make a million a month. I say, so you're going to be broke because <laughs> I make close to three and they're going to be like, I would be broke off a million a month. I would have no money. I would have no money if I made a million a month. I literally spend 700,000 a month at least, at least to make my money. Let's add it up. My place right here that I just drove from is 95,000 a month. That's just, the place I live at. Yeah, 95,000 a month. My place in San Diego is 65,000 a month. Utilities are 20. So there's 95 and 85 right there. My warehouse is 25,000 a month. Those are just the actual places that I'm going. Every time I fly back and forth from California to Miami, it's 50,000 per way. 50,000 to Cali, 50,000 back, 100 bands. When I just flew to Dallas, it was 60,000. And I flew there to speak for Carlos Reyes' event. We can just keep you fucking get going. Plane, man. That, I, that's the <laughs> next shit. So, um, so even like, say my team who runs everything. Yeah. Like I have a team that runs some, like just my customer service, some back end stuff. They post stuff for me, do certain things. Um, they, they're a 10% profit sharing. They've been with me since the beginning. Okay. Cool. And this was a company that was built as like a, a, a part of my business growing, built another business. Now this business is 10% profit sharing. So bam, if we make 2.7, they get 270,000. But they were with me when I made 3,000 a month and they got 300. Trust They're me. reaping the rewards. They've been there the whole yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the thing is, is I don't know how to tell people other than just listen to the fucking people who are doing exactly what you want to do in 2023. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, Wes, what about, what about spending all that money on those cars and all that stuff? Oh my God. I'm like, bro, it's my brand. Yeah. Like it's attention. Yeah. You're in the age of attention and monetizing attention. It's not only that, but I listen to people who have what I want. 
Oh. I'm not going to take personal training tips from a fat dude. Mm. I'm not going to take business advice from a broke motherfucker. I'm not going to take branding advice from someone who bought their followers. Mm. I'm just, I'm not stupid. So everybody needs to pay the fuck attention to what they're trying to do. Grandpa's method doesn't work anymore. <laughs> like literally, like look how many people, Look how many pe people always just talk about passive income, passive income, passive income. I'm like, earned income. This is America, bro, or wherever the fuck you live in the world. You, you know shit. you can make money too, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, they just want passive income. Yeah, but we want both. We want earned income and passive income from investments. It's just, it's so mind-boggling. The, the broke mindset to the middle-class mindset to the rich, wealthy mindset. The broke mindset believes you go to work to make money and money goes to bills. Mm -hmm. That's what they believe, that money goes to bills. So that's their mindset. I've never went to work, so I've never believed money went to bills. I skipped that whole shit, okay? I've never had a job. Didn't subscribe for that one. <laughs> never had a fucking, didn't subscribe to that. I've never had a job. And then so the middle class mindset believes that you, you, go, you make enough money so that you can you can afford some, some luxuries and live the white picket fence and the good life and da da da. Mm -hmm. And then the wealthy and rich mindset believes that you need to make more, you need to have money to make more money. Now in 2023, the age of attention, what is gonna make the most money? Monetizing attention. What gets attention? That's what you spend your money on. And I never cared, I've never clicked on an ad. So I don't fucking watch people's ads and click on them. And now all these guys are spending X amount on ads. I spend that mo money on organic videos and content that makes people watch it. Mm -hmm. It's a much smarter way to spend your fucking money than just giving 500,000 a month to Facebook for some fucking ad spend because you think you're getting in some fucking algorithm. What if you spent 500,000 a month on the craziest lifestyle that made people watch your dope ass life? And then you had a service that really fucking worked. You know, Mr. Beast videos cost like a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. And then there, there's, you think he runs ads? He doesn't run fucking ads. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he doesn't run fucking ads, you guys. <laughs> you guys are stupid. Spend more money on your organic life so that people want to watch it. Buy all the shit that you like. Live the life you like. And then monetize a skill set and show people the skill set that actually worked for you. So I'm not selling people snake oil. I'm selling them a diet and a workout and the mindset that worked for me. People who talk about snake oil salesmen when it's a fucking actual program, dipshit. You could either do the workout or not. So anyone who doesn't, who get, works with a fitness guy or someone changing their life and they didn't get the result, it's because they didn't fucking do it. Mm -hmm. There's no one on earth who does a workout and a diet and doesn't get their result. Mm -hmm. So anyone who talks about fitness people that it's, they're not helping the people, you're a fucking idiot. Mm. The person didn't help themselves. Right. And there's plenty of people who did help themselves. Mm -hmm. If you sat down at Carbone right now, one of the best restaurants in Miami, eight people would love it, two would hate it. That's just it, mm -hmm. it's service. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna please all these motherfuckers. Right. Right. But right. a lot of people get caught up online and hear in the negative, they weren't even your buyers anyways. Fuck them, they could dip. Yeah. You know, weirdos don't believe weirdos weird stories. Yeah. And real people can read between the lines. I'm just helping people read between the lines of what's gonna really fucking work for them. I love that, man. So you, you, mentioned, you, you mentioned mentorship, right? You're, you're helping all these people transform their lives, take their lives to the next level. Who mentors you? Who keeps you in check? Who helps you get to that next level? I mean, I, I've worked with a lot of top people, and I mean, I speak to top people. You know, at the very start, I mean, Bedros was one of my mentors. We did events together, and we did some podcasts together, and we worked together a lot. And then, um, you know, now I just talk to certain people all the time, like, like Tim Grover and Andy Frazella. And um, I really am, like, so different in what I do because... I didn't follow any of these guys who build coaching businesses or these methods. I didn't follow any of their blueprints. Originally, one of my first mentors told me, if it's a $2,000 sale, you have to get on the phone. I don't get on the phone to sell. You text. I just text. Yeah. They, know, they know it's me. 
I've t- I've shown up for them so much. I've been talking to them for years. Yeah. They know it's me. So in all reality, I probably spent more time on our relationship for it to be a text close. Yeah. So that's why I can close in text. Yeah. The business people are pieces of shit and they just want to show you an ad and sell you right away and have no relationship with yeah. you. I know my people. Yeah. And you keep it real, man, because I, I got to say, since the first time that I connected with you, like, you called me out. You called me out right away. You're like, dude, like, this is, we're not going to waste time. I got money to make. If you're going to hire me, hire me. If not, yeah, yeah, I, I was network. just to the point. I'm like, but, but I appreciate yeah, that, yeah. right? Because you said he's like, this is what's wrong with today's society. People don't keep their word. People are not honoring their word when they said they're going to do something. See, my, my thing is, there's two things. I want you to be the man you needed yeah. in your whole life and be the client that you want. Yeah, you remember all, you all too that. often people 100%. like in real estate or people in sales or people who are coaches, They'll slow drag the person that they're about to buy through, but they want people to buy through them quick as fuck. And I'm like, I just believe in like karma, but I believe like we are what we get. So if I'm going to buy something, I just go in and buy it. Yeah. And literally I bought a Ferrari cash one time because the kid, it was his first day working at Ferrari and I didn't want to be a window shopper, piece of shit, pussy ass bitch. <laughs> so I walked in, I didn't even want the car. It was an F8 Tributo. It was like a 2020 for like 500,000. That was not a good price for the motherfucker. The thing should have been like 360, but it was height of the market. Like cars were going for a lot and I caught myself having to back up my big ass fucking mouth. So here I go and I go in and the kid's like, dude, it's my first day. I said, oh fuck, no it isn't. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all excited and I'm like, Fuck. I'm, I can't be a window shopper lame on this kid. And then, so I didn't want to be a window shopper. I didn't want to be that fucking lame ass motherfucker. Yeah. I don't like those people. Yeah. So I'm not going to be those people. And so the kid's like, dude, this car would be sick. It's dope. It was a murdered out Ferrari. I filmed it. It's on my page. I said, okay, I'll be back. I'll be back in 20 minutes. He didn't think I go he get a back. check for 497000 And I come back and I hand him the check and I said, you better believe in sales the rest of your fucking life. And I want people to believe in sales. Yeah. So I buy. Oh. If, if you're not a consumer and you're not making people believe in sales and you're a salesman, you're a fucking idiot. Like the whole thing is, is I just fully believe that if I show up every day and I'm the example of what will make people's lives better through the law of compensation alone, people will just want to work with me. They'll be like, I don't even fucking care at this point, Wes. You've already changed my life. It's like I owe you this money. Mm. And I'm like, but you don't owe it to me. We're going to make you a shitload of money too. Because I know how to make a shitload of money online. Dude, some real estate guy the other day, this is how stupid the guy was. (laughs) He was asking about how I'm going to make him more money. And I'm like, and I actually got on the phone because he was so stupid. (laughs) Because I want to prove a point. And I go, we're on the phone, Tom. And he goes, yeah. I said, Tom, we're on the fucking phone right now, me and you, and you're trying to buy my service. Do you get that? And he's like, yeah, but how are you going to do that for me? I'm like, how did we get here? And he's like, oh, I'm like, I put out a piece of content where I said certain things. That certain shit I put out had you click on something and now we're on the phone and you're about to buy my program. Mm -hmm. Do you not see the value in that? He's like, okay, I get it. How is everyone so stupid? That's what I teach you. I teach you how to make certain content for free that gets people to click on it or message you and you get to sell them your product or service. That is the most priceless thing on the planet when a lot of people in your industry have to go knock on a door and have someone pull a gun on them to get them off their fucking driveway. And solar, you have to go knock on their door. I mean, people are probably like, get the fuck away from my house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. all the time. That's that's crazy. So let, let me ask you this, Wes, right? So you, right now you're starting to post a lot on social media about your girl, your kids, how has that impacted your life in today? Because you, you're loud, you're aggressive. 
when it comes to you, I have a little girl. When it comes to uh, my little girl, like she softens me up. Like she's daddy's little girl. Anything that she says, like I, my, it's my duty to 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 provide for her and grow her and change that mindset and bulletproof her mindset. Right? How has that impacted the way that you're carrying yourself today? Being around women and enjoying every moment. Oh yeah, I, and I love seeing. Oh, that, they're man. they're the best. I mean, they're the best part of my life, obviously. But um, I don't really, you know, I don't I don't really change too much of how I am. Like like to them, obviously I'm completely different. Like we're doing whatever they, whatever they want and they're, they're my life. But I, I'm just two different halves. I, I'm the Wes Watson who's out fucking killing animals and hunting in the fucking, <laughs> in the wilderness and bringing back the food. And around them, I'm making sure they're fed. Yeah. I'm, I'm the fucking, you know, that like back in the olden times when the motherfucker went and to go fucking hunt, he was vicious. And then when he came home, yeah. He was with his family. So I, you know, I just, I think that's natural. What have you learned from them? What I mean, what I've really learned is just to listen to my intuition. So like for a while, me and my girl were broken up for like four months. Mm. And I, I wasn't right because I'm a man who needs to be a protector and a provider. And I knew she really loved me. And um, I just, I just listened to my conscience, like without fail. And my conscience, the voice inside me, God, whatever you want to say, told me, go take care of those girls. And without fail, I listened to my conscience. I said, good. And I told her, I told her one day, I said, um, even if it doesn't work out with us, like you guys will be taken care of. Like too many men are just broke, little pussy, weak bitches where they're like 30 grand a month to people who don't really respect me or whatever. I'm like, I committed to giving them everything they needed financially before I got the outcome I wanted. Everyone's too conditional. This is the problem in life. People are conditional. I'll give you the money if you meet my needs first. No, 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 no. You guys are taken care of for life. That fulfills me in my heart. You need anything hit me. Trust me. They'll be hitting you up because now you're the most genuine motherfucker that ever existed. Mm -hmm. You don't need your conditions met to meet theirs and to show up for them. That's relational over transactional. Before, I was kind of protecting myself. Mm. I was more transactional with our relationship. I was like, nah, you're not doing what I need you to do, and I'm doing for you financially all this stuff, so fuck this, you know? And so that's why we were not seeing eye to eye. I need you to live with me in Miami. You have to move from where you're at, and that's how it has to be, or we can't be together. That's where our relationship failed. And then once I realized I wasn't the same without their love and energy in my life, that I just went and said, I don't care where you live. I don't care what's happening. I just want you guys to know how special you are to me and how much you've already done for me, that anything you need, the answer is yes. Mm. Now, once I lived like that for a little bit, then they just came to me. That's the story of life, bro. Quit being conditional motherfuckers. That's my business, bro. My business is built that way. I showed up for people before I was ever compensated. And I'll show up every day without a guarantee of compensation. Now, all the lowest level people on this planet who don't get what they want, no they have to be guaranteed the compensation they want, then they'll show up. Mm -hmm. But the highest level people, they'll show up at their highest level, and then you pay them what you believe they deserve. Now I'm doing that in every area of my life, and I'm thriving. Love that. Love that, love that. So for the people that are not at your level yet, right? They haven't made the millions. They want to build a brand. They don't have the cars. They don't have the mansion. They don't have that lifestyle. What do you recommend that they start posting on social media? How can they start creating that? They, they got to they gotta heal themselves and teach others to do the same. Okay. So it's got to be life stuff. You have to actually change your life and then teach others how to change their life. Because mm. if we give someone money who hasn't changed... They're just going to yeah, ruin their life habits. quicker. Yeah. It's going to speed up the death rate. Mm. That they're going to they're gonna ruin their life faster. Money's just going to make them worse. It's going to amplify That's, their habits. It's right? going to amplify their habits. That, yeah. The biggest thing is, is that, like, give a guy millions and see what he chooses to do. I'm not some stupid Dan Bilzerian playboy <laughs> with 19 models around me acting like I'm super fucking cool because I got money. Yeah. I wanted to be who I am. I'm a family man. Like I love, I want one woman, I want to give her my soul and I want to be a great man to my people. I don't think being a, that bad example, like a lot of these men are who have money is good for the world. I don't think the rock peddling tequila is the right thing to do. I think he's a piece of shit for that. 
I think someone like Dan Bilzerian's a dipshit for showing that lifestyle and wanting young men to want to be like that. I think I'm the right fucking example. Someone who has millions, could have all these women in this luxurious life, but he chooses to even take care of children that aren't even his and, and take care of and commit to one woman. I don't give a fuck. Everyone can talk shit about me all they want. I validate myself to me. And I know that the sacrificial route I've chosen does more for me than that empty, pleasure-seeking, bitch-ass, low-level, undisciplined man route could ever do anyone. Men who smoke weed, they drink, they live like fucking little boys fucking parading around, fucking partying all night. That's pussy bitch shit. Mm. They're all a bunch of bitches who are actually hurt. They're not hard. They're hurt. Hard is really fucking being there for your people all the fucking time while building a monster of a company and being a fucking father, being a man, being a fucking role model for other men and leading other men who are lost so that we don't have this problem of weak men anymore. Mm -hmm. Love that shit, man. So, so you have the, you have the cars, you have the lifestyle, like what's next for Wes, man? Like what, what, what is your ambition? How do you, how do you, how do you maintain yourself at such a high level? I've never, I've never had goals. Like if I put a cap and I'm like, I have to be a billionaire, then I'd stop at a billion. I have no goals. I have no cap. So my goal, yeah, to each, my only thing each day is to not break character. So if, if year after year for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, I don't break character, then I become someone who operates at such a high frequency, I'm felt differently than some shady, low-level pussy man who knows he's shameful and guilty about the, about the man he actually is in his heart. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I just want to be a better man. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be better to everybody. And uh, people see the way I talk and shit. I think that's better. I think it's better to be direct and to tell people the truth because everyone else is lying to you, if not. Like, love ain't lies. You don't lie to people and act like you're doing them justice. Yeah. If you're accommodating people's shortcomings, you're doing them the greatest injustice known to man. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not telling them what's going to better them because you're favoring yourself and you don't want conflict but we all know conflict avoided is conflict multiplied so the whole point is is to notice people's flaws help them out with them and then show them a path that's going to work yeah the f you mentioned in one of the podcasts the first form of manifestation it starts with your body right like making sure that if you it if you have the discipline to get your body right, you'll have the discipline to do everything else. Right? Well, how could a man lead anybody if he can't lead himself? Yeah. And how, how could someone tell me, how could someone, like I had a client one time on a Zoom call say, Wes, my 14 year old nephew won't listen to me. And it was quiet. Everyone was like, oh man, his 14 year old nephew's using drugs, messing with gangs and doing all this shit. What's Wes's answer gonna be? And I just said, I wouldn't listen to you either. And he's like, fuck, well, that's harsh. I'm like, well, what the fuck have you done? What the fuck have you done for me to listen to you? And he's like, oh, fuck. It's like, nah, if you loved your nephew, you would have done shit to prove to him you're someone to listen to, you fucking idiot. And he's like, oh. And, he's, and I'm like, and why should he listen to you? You don't even listen to you. There's no way that version of you right there is the version of you that you want. So you don't listen to you. And all of a sudden he's supposed to fuck you. Why don't you go listen to you for a duration of time that matters and actually get a fucking result that people want to see so that we, you earned our right for you to listen to you. This motherfucker right here earned the right for people to listen to him with flying colors. I beat everybody. I literally beat them all very quickly. Why? Because I didn't believe I could walk two paths at once. I didn't believe I could be an undisciplined, shitty alcoholic, drug-fueled fucking pussy man sometimes, and then sometimes be a great guy. I that's said, all I'm in. all in on being a better man, and that's why I beat everyone. Not because I'm better than them, because I quit taking back steps. Oh. Key things that you said right now, right? Learning how to say no, right? Learning how to say no to all the vices, and at the same time, listening to yourself when you say something, keeping that word, right? So a lot of people have not kept their word, and is so engraved in their paradigm and their programming that every time they say, oh, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds this month, their subconscious mind is literally telling them bullshit. You're not Dude, gonna I've, I've, seen top, <laughs> I've seen top people online post like, like that they're about to be on this journey. 
Like, and I'm like, I go in the comments. I said, we're all watching. You better fucking do this. <laughs> you better fucking do this, you piece of shit. And they never do it. Yeah. The successful guys never do it. Never. Because they're selfish, bro. They're like, well, I'm living good. I don't have to hold my word to other people. The only reason I'm successful is because I don't feel good if I didn't hold my word to everybody. It ain't whether I'm living good. I don't even enjoy life if I didn't hold my word to everybody. And my word's fucked. I got to get up at 2.45 for the rest of my fucking life because I had a big fucking mouth and said, this is the time I get up. But guess what? By running that in for so long, it's been such a source of validation that when I walk in a room, I'm like, look at these pussies. You probably just got up, yeah. bitches. You already had like two days when they're really waking I, up. <laughs> I, already, I already made more than they make all month. By the time they got the fuck up, crushed a workout, I'm on my like fucking third meal by the time we're at the speaking engagement at like 10 a.m. And I, I'm, I'm already so far ahead of them. The thing is, is when you learn to validate yourself to yourself, and it's unbiased. You're not lying. Because a lot of people will just lie. They're like, yeah, I, I know what works for me. The only way you know what works for someone is there's no deviation. Mm. If there's deviation, then they're just saying it works for them. They're just doing whatever they want. But if someone really found out what works for them, there's no deviation from that process. I'm probably the only motherfucker on the internet who actually recorded zero deviation from zero dollars getting out of prison to being worth what I am today in six years with not one misstep in their program or process that was actually docu documented. Nobody else has done that. So that's how I earned their trust. I didn't want them to just trust me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to fucking earn it. Yeah, you had the validation, the results, the actions, the habits. I would listen to me. Yeah. That's what most people got to realize before they start talking. Would you listen to you first? Would you listen to you, motherfucker? Gotcha. If there was a room full of people trying doing what we did and like, I would pick me. Like, honestly, I, cause I did it. I really did beat everybody. There's probably some people that would be a close second, but I would pick me. Make sure you would pick you. And if you were sitting on this podcast stage with Jeffrey Pinzone and you were saying that you would pick you, I wouldn't believe you more than I would pick me. And that's the thing. That is the mindset of the person who will win. The person who really deeply believes they're the best in the world. Mm. Michael Jordan didn't believe he was second. He never believed it once. Yeah. He's fucking Michael Jordan. Yeah. Like we all know he's the yeah. best, whatever yeah, the fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's arguable that there's like 10 top guys that you could say, nah, he was this and he this, and but he did this. Yeah. You got to get on that level uh -huh. where they're like, it's arguable that he's the best. Yeah. Like some people could say, but in all reality, I don't give a fuck. Like 100% at what I do, I'm the best. Yeah. And I need you to think that way about you. Yeah. I would feel no way if Jeffrey was like, I'm the fucking best at this solar shit. I actually have a homie who says he's the best at this solar shit and I believe him because yeah. he honestly exudes that confidence. Yeah. He has a $400 million company. He's young. He's driven. He speaks a certain way. He carries himself a certain way. And I believe that he's the best at it. I believe he'll be the best. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes. So you got to have a, Mike Tyson says it, right? He was a champion before he was a champion. Way before. He's like, I was a champion before I was a champion. What does that come from? Well, holding being, our word yeah, to ourselves. Holding your word. Because you, you know that no matter what comes up, you'll be able to pivot and you'll never miss because you always held your word to yourself. I was a pro snowboarder. I was one of the top drug dealers. Dude, I've been a pro my whole life. <laughs> I've never been a nine to five guy. I've never had a small vision. I've always had a massive vision. I've always been a top level competitor. Interesting. So you say you've had a big vision, but you've never set goals, right? Never set goals, but I had a big vision. I would never cap oh, yeah. it. Like, and be like, I need to make X amount. I still don't do that. Okay. Like, literally, if I start, like, trying to say how much I made today, it pisses me off. I'm like, is this year better than last year? Like, I'm just longer. I have longer view. I was in prison for 10 years. Yeah. Like, if I'm out here living this way and I'm splitting hairs, like, how much did I make this month? I'm so fucking late. Like I've lost all my edge because my edge comes from the fact that I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to have the longest streak of what? Of just giving valuable content. I'm not going to say I'm going to have the longest streak of being a millionaire, making the most money or all these things. I'm just going to have the longest streak of showing up for people front end and giving them everything I know of value. That's all I know. I'm just going to have that streak.
And with that, everything else is taken care of. I believe so, yeah. right? Yeah. That's that's the cornerstone Controlling of it. the controllables, right? That's the fucking, that's, that's what that. people, Damn, people want that. to get, they want to get their outcome without really sacrificing. And I don't believe that's a sacrifice. Pay a price. I, I don't believe it's a sacrifice okay. to live the way I live. Because yeah. I've lived the other ways. I don't want to just go kick my feet up by my pool. Mm. I don't want to. I could do that probably for like 45 minutes and it's over. I love what you said because you said it's not a sacrifice. So maybe that's why one of the reasons why people don't take that action because they're like, fuck, I got to sacrifice. You don't see it as a sacrifice. You're like, you see it, see like it as, I get to. I like, see what? it as validation. Yeah. I see it okay. as, damn, you used to be a real shitty person, Wes. You'll do this for other people. You're fucking dope. Like, you're a good dude, man. I just wanted to be a good dude. Yeah. Like, I, I was so fed up with being a bad person that now I just wanted to really be solid. And obviously, I still have that shark in me. Yeah. It comes out, yeah. you know? Like, so on the other, the other day, I was on a call with him for an hour, and we went over everything. And the guy's going to be on my program for a year. Probably not now, though. So we were on a call for an hour, and then we got off the call. We got off the call and the guy continued to message me about stuff for another hour and a half and it was 8 p.m. So I called him and I said, listen, fuck you. What the fuck is the matter with you? And he's like, what? I'm just asking questions. We were on a call for an hour and now you've asked me questions for an hour and 20 minutes. You don't find this massively disrespectful? Like it's 8 p.m. I'm with my fucking family. Very few people would have this little awareness. Most people in my program would have done this, dipshit. Hey, Wes, I know it's 8 p.m. Uh, you're with your family. I'm going to hit you with some questions tomorrow. I'm going to do everything you told me to do that I can do right now. And tomorrow I'll hit you with some questions. Perfect. This motherfucker just kept going. <laughs> and I told him, fuck you. Get a refund. You're a piece of shit. You learn this lesson now and you never be so intrusive with someone's time ever again. Keep in mind, we had a year to recoup $15,000 he spent with me. We had a year to build his brand and make as much as he wanted. Like we were gonna 100X his shit, but he was so fucking stupid and unaware of another man's life and his time that he completely completely trashed our relationship and threw me under the fucking rug and I had to fucking tell him. That's one thing that my girl tells me she loves about me. If someone rich taxes me, if someone tries to get over on me, if someone does anything like that, I fucking tell them right away to their fucking face. And she's like, I really love that about you because a lot of women probably don't speak their mind like that because they're like, no, I can't really talk that way. And she's like, I always wished I was a dude. I could fuck some, some of these motherfucking people up. I'm like, well, we don't need to fuck them up, but we do need to fucking tell them when they're fucked up towards yeah. us. You guys, stop silencing your voice by not speaking your mind. Mm -hmm. Most people have, got, have no power in their voice because they've consistently silenced themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, bring it up. You don't have to fully just fucking blow up on the fucking person like I usually do. But I mean... I think people will learn that lesson if you tell them, look at you're a piece of shit, fool. What the fuck you doing? <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, I didn't see it that way. Cause they never do. They thought they paid you and they should yeah. just run you into the fucking ground and get theirs. Yeah. They didn't give a fuck that you were a human being. And a lot of people, when you're telling them that, they're gonna be like, what the fuck? Like they've never been approached that way. So now- They'll they, remember. Yeah, they'll remember forever. Yeah, They'll be sure. a better person from it. Yeah. Next time they'll be like, considerate of you like I know we we're on a call for an hour and I do have a lot of stuff that I need to apply before I even ask these questions so I'm gonna go apply these things first and then when I come to these uh questions that I have where they're actual roadblocks that I have to hurdle I'm gonna hit you up I'm like exactly that's why the program's set up that way you were just being a prick trying to understand everything before you went and applied anything that is not how someone becomes successful imperfect action is how someone becomes successful they go apply first and then they ask fucking questions. Apply, fail, then ask questions. Hundred percent. They, they don't even people. know what they're talking about when it's hypothetical. So when I go to download this app, how's it gonna go? <laughs> Shut the fuck up and download it, stupid. <laughs> Why are we gonna talk about how it's gonna go? <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> you can. A lot of people. That's like scapegoat behavior. 
They don't want to really go perform and fail. They want to so, get ready to get ready, right? They, they're always <laughs> getting ready to get ready. They don't want to go perform and fail. So they ask so many questions and they talk so much that they never do anything in their life. Like literally the price of procrastination is a life you could have lived. And people mm. who overgather information, they overgather information and they underapply that scapegoat behavior. And it's actually a massive form of procrastination. The real motherfucker just says, what do I got to do? He goes and applies it. And he's like, oh, did that wrong. Oh, it's better this way. Yup. And that guy moves quick. Yeah. The price of procrastination is the life you didn't live. The life you could have lived. You could have lived. Oof. fucking love that. Right. I love that because I'm that type of person. I like failing. I like freaking figuring out in the, uh, along the way. And that's how I started my Go Heavy event. I, our first event was in January. Come out of, when I put it together, man, it was just like, man, who are you, Jeff? Who's going to buy tickets? Who's going to go show up? How are you going to get speakers? But I just figure it out along the process, right? Ask Oh, right? it's never easy. It's never easy, right? There's going to be process. There's going to be times that you want to throw in the towel. Yeah. Like, what does Go Heavy mean to you? I mean, that's all in. Like, going heavy means I'm fuck. There's no fucking fuck a plan B. To put everything behind it. It's all or nothing. Mm, like, just we're, we're, doing, we're doing everything we possibly can. Yeah. So when it comes to speaking, Wes, like, you've spoken at many stages. You're, you're, you're becoming a f phenomenal communicator. Like, how do you prepare your message to that audience? That I am my out? message. Like, there's, if you go online, everybody's copying my message. Every, <laughs> everybody's biting my shit. And it is because it's a solid message. Why? Because I spent more time with myself than everybody else out here. And it wasn't by choice. It was by default because I went to prison. So you guys, you don't have to go to prison to be a better speaker. But you do have to spend time with your fucking self. You do got to put in the work, yo. You do got to put the work in. You have to spend fucking time with yourself. A man is more useful when he travels alone because he reflects more. So you need that morning process. You need that time to yourself to really figure out your core beliefs, your values. Because during when shit's not going your way, if you still stay the course of building yourself, during times of adversity, a man really develops his strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. love that love that Wes but Wes I, 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 I want to be mindful of your time any last words that you want to give to our audience hey you guys this is your life's purpose don't ever fucking write me or fucking write Jeffrey and say well, well I don't know what to do this is your life's purpose to create the individual that you admire that you admire and give that person to the world so who do you admire do you admire a broke dude? No, you don't. Do you admire a fat ass dude who's telling his wife over and over that he's gonna change this year? No. Do you admire a grab ass drunk dude who's fucking sitting there trying to take advantage of women? No, we do not admire these people. This is what people do when they're selfish. Create the individual you admire and give that man to your people and to the world and it will change your fucking life. Fucking love it, man. There you have it, guys. Have the courage, have the balls to keep your word. With that said, thank you for tuning in. Unleash your power. See you on the next one. Yeah. Let's go.